Hello everyone and welcome back to Lori's Boston Found. My name is Lori. I am a full-time reseller on Poshmark and on eBay and today I have a what's sold video for you. It's been a while that I've done a traditional what's sold video and I asked a couple videos back what you would prefer, which style, and a lot of people said they would really just like to see a good old-fashioned, you know, chunk of time, soup to nuts, what went down, the good, the bad, the ugly. That's what I'm doing today. Today's video will cover my sales on Poshmark and on eBay from May 1st to May 7th of 2021. So stick around, we'll be right back. All right, if you are new to my channel, welcome. I am so happy that you found me. I like to bring you along with me thrifting sometimes. I do lots of haul videos and I try to share videos on like little stats and things that work for me or don't work for me in my reselling business. So if that sounds good to you and you enjoy reseller content, feel free to give this video a thumbs up at any time if you're having a good time and consider subscribing. Uh, we have a good time over here. We did just go visit my son, Anthony, who graduated from college. We had a wonderful weekend in Pennsylvania. Um, but my sales at the end of last week definitely dipped. So I just want to review really quickly some overall numbers for the first week in May. In total, I sold 41 items from May 1st to May 7th. 38 of those items were sold on Poshmark. Three items were sold on eBay. During the month of April, when I did a ton of shopping and thrifting with Hope, my goal was to just get items listed. And typically I post first to Poshmark. Not typically, 99.9% .9 of the time Poshmark is where I put my listings first. I draft everything in Vendu and then I blast it out to Poshmark and then I have it right there in Vendu so when I'm ready to push it over to eBay, it's really quick and in fact, that's one of my goals this week is to list 10 items a day and cross post 20 items a day. We'll see if I hit that goal, but I really need to amp up my, my eBay business because I have seen a steady decline since I was super focused on cross posting in January and February. My three eBay sales totaled $95 and my Poshmark sales were $1,283. Just want to note that that is before the fees that Poshmark takes. It's before my cost of goods. It's before any discounts that I offer on shipping. So that is not what I take home with me. That is my sale price. So in total, for the first week of May, I sold $1,378 in product. My average selling price was $33.61. I had one item that sold that was uh, purchased retail arbitrage, which, mean, which means I bought it in a, a retail location. It was not thrifted. It was also my largest sale of the week. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that later because there was also a case opened on it. So that's always fun. But this was a good week to talk about. I had two case, two cases opened, which I don't have a lot of cases opened, um, but it's good that it happened this week so we can talk about it. Uh, I had two bundle sales. I had to cancel one sale because I couldn't find an item. It's one of my very oldest things in my entire inventory. Seven items sold for $20 or less and four items sold for $50 or more. So why don't we just jump right in. The first thing that I sold were these Le Artiste Santorino leather floral slide sandals. These were purchased in a thread up box um, of shoes that it was a video that I did with my friend Hope. I think we paid $9, $9, six or $9. I think it was $6 per shoes. I think the handbag one is $9. So these were cute little floral sandals. I had them listed, I think around $38 and received a $30 offer. I was really happy with that sale price. They were listed for 87 days. Next up was this Youth Cart Heart hoodie. Picked this up at the bins. I love to pick up the brand Cart Heart. I will pick it up um, even if it has like small marks. I feel like it's kind of a rugged brand. So this is one of those brands that even if it has a little tear or a small stain, I will still grab it because it still seems to move. Still sold for $15. I picked it up at the bins. It probably cost me a dollar. It was kids. That's exactly where I expected it to be. Be. Next up, this was uh, a great sale, but I just looked at my feedback on it this morning and they gave me a one-star rating. I was really disappointed because A, 
I didn't see any of the things that they mentioned and B, I got a low rating and I don't know whether or not to reach out. But this brand Driftwood is a really great denim brand. They often do like embellishing and they're kind of a high end jean. These sold for $38. These were listed for 259 days. I think I paid $4 for them at an estate sale and I was in love with them. I never anticipated having them in stock for this long. And people within the community talk about this brand pretty frequently. I looked this morning and I had a one star rating and it said lots of marks and stains, super disappointed. And I, I just, I look over my stuff really well. I went back and I looked at the pictures. I didn't see any stains on the pictures. I have no idea what they're talking about. They haven't opened up a case yet and they haven't asked to return it. So I don't know if they're gonna wash them and see if they can get the stains out. I don't know why somebody would say that if it wasn't the truth, but I went and looked back at the pictures. I have no recollection of there being anything wrong with these jeans. To be continued on that. Okay, next up was one of two bundles that I sold. Um, I sold this Style & Co floral v-neck flowy blouse, picked this up at the bins. Uh, so this hasn't been around very long because I got this, both of these items when Hope was here shopping. And I believe that this went to a viewer. So thank you so much, Jeannie, for your purchase. Style & Co is a brand that sold at Macy's. It's not something that I always pick up. The reason I picked this up was because it was at the bins and it was an extra large and it was a style that I liked so I knew it would sell. And then I had these Madewell gray high rise skinny jeans in a size 32, which I also found at the bins, which was a score. So they were listed uh, together, they were $83 and she sent me an offer for $75, which I thought was very sweet. So I profited $60 before my cost of goods. This was a great profit and a cute bundle and I think they will look really cute together. I believe this next item also sold to a viewer so thank you very much Mora I loved this piece when I found it I got this at a local thrift store outside of Boston it was a mod cloth blazer and it was gray and it had little gold embroidered bumblebees and I thought it was so adorable it was in the kids section so I was only charged like $3.99 for it I think I listed it for $35 or $38 and I received a $30 offer on it. So my earnings were $24 after Poshmark fees, less the $4 that I paid. So I profited $20 on this jacket. I actually think that sold the day that I listed it. So that was pretty exciting. On May 2nd, I had nine sales. That was a very, very good day. So this Athleta Everyday Tan Bra, I paid $1.99 for it and it sold in a day or the day that I listed it for $20. I'm pretty sure that was a full price sale and I was so excited. Athleta is one of those brands that it can sit forever for me or it can move really fast. I still enjoy picking up Athleta. I'm pretty selective about what I pick up, but a bra for $1.99 by Athleta in excellent condition. That was an easy pickup and a super fast flip. The next two items also sold in a bundle that sold for $50. This was great profit for me because one of the items was given to me and the other item was purchased at the bin. So I got this high vent puffer jacket for kids. It was North Face brand at the bins when I was with Hope. So this was a really quick flip. Um, but it had a few stains on it and I noted them. I think it was washed with like a pink marker or something. And I tried to spot treat it. There were also some like just really dirty things. I washed this coat three times, but I still was confident that it would sell, which is why I picked it up. Um, I love selling North Face puffers for kids. It's like one of my little bolos. I feel like they flip all the time, although I have one that's been sitting for a bit. But I think this is my third or fourth North Face puffer for like that age five and under group for kids. Um, so I had that listed for $32. And then I had this Lena Case Casey Silk Leopard button down blouse. That was a stitch fix item that was given to me from a friend who has given me so many great things. So thank you, Nicole, if you're watching. I had that listed for 38. I had the North Face listed for 32. That is a total of 70. I accepted a $50 offer, but the shirt was free and the puffer jacket probably cost a dollar. All right, mail is here to pick up. So I'm gonna pause for a little bit because the dogs are gonna bark. It's been like 10 minutes. I um, had some breakfast, finished my coffee. Next up is this classic gray champion spell out hoodie. Um, it sold for $25 on May 2nd less Poshmark fee. I also offered a shipping discount for this, so my earnings were $17.54. 
I believe I picked up this hoodie at Savers and I think I paid around four or five dollars for it. Um, yeah, so not a huge profit on that. The reason I continue to pick up Champion sweatshirts, especially like the spell out kind, is just because they're a quick flip. They tend to get a lot of attention. They don't sell for a ton, but they sell relatively quickly. The next thing that sold was a really great sale, in my opinion. I picked up this Banana Republic Issa London Zebra Kimono dress. Um, it was a collab that was done, and I loved the zebra print. I thought it was a really great graphic. I thought it was a flattering dress, just really beautiful quality. Um, it sold on an offer for $39, uh, less the Poshmark fee of $7.80, and my earnings were $31.20. I'm not sure what I paid for this. I'm going to say around $5 since that's my average cost of goods. Um, so that was a great one. That had been around for some time. That sold on May 2nd as well. And I don't typically have the best sales with dresses, but they have picked up a bit more recently. So this particular dress I had in my Poshmark closet for 404 days. I was still really happy that it sold for $39. This was one of those items that I feared I would have to like keep marking down and sell eventually for under $20. All right, next up were these Steve Madden Classic Leopard Suede Loafers. They sold for $32 and they were listed for 227 days. I do get a lot of low ball offers on my Steve Madden stuff. So $32 was a sale I could definitely live with. So that was great. I also did give $1.50 discount discount on these and they were a size 11. I actually have two more sales this day. One was this Jessica Simpson new with tag romper. This is actually the one that I had to cancel unfortunately. One of the reasons why I'm learning it's important to really go through my inventory is because some of that old stuff that's been around for a very long time when you hear how many days I had this piece on hand uh, it may not be a surprise to you why it somehow got lost in the shuffle. This was one of those pieces that sold. Um, and when the offer came in, I saw the history of how many times I had sent offers on it. And do you ever get those offers and you look and it's almost embarrassing how many times you've sent out offers? And then like more than 90 days will go by. So when you send an offer, it gets resent to them. And sometimes the offer is higher than your first offer. I wish Poshmark could safeguard for that so people aren't getting offers from sellers that are actually higher than their initial offer. It's kind of embarrassing. So they sent me a $14 offer and I was like, let's just put this poor piece to rest. Like it is time. All right, so you're ready for how long this was on hand. 975 days, 975. And then I couldn't find it. I didn't like turn my house upside down for this because I was like, it's a $14 sale. It's been around forever. Obviously it's not in high demand. I've been struggling with rompers. I'll put that out there. Rompers were hot, hot, hot when I started selling in 2018. And um, the right romper can still sell but I'm very um, picky about what I'll pick up for rompers these days. I have switched my inventory several, not several times, but I mean, this piece has probably traveled quite a bit since I started almost three years ago. So this is probably one of the first listings I ever had. I'm kind of sad I couldn't find it. I was so excited when it finally sold. Oh, and correction, that was not new with tag. Maybe that didn't help the sale either. Uh, the last thing that sold on this day, I purchased um, through a buyout. Uh, you've heard me mention it before. There was a student who lives on the West Coast who reached out to me. He had sold his inventory once before to Nicole State when he was living on the West Coast and coming out to Massachusetts for college. And then he reached out to me when he was going back and asked if I wanted to buy some of his inventory. So I did not buy out everything. I was a little late to the game. And so he had a limited selection. This was a sweater that I bought that I really liked, um, but I noticed that it did have some pilling. When I saw it in person, um, it wasn't like the greatest, but so I just priced it to sell. This J. Crew Wool Blend Color Block Turtleneck Sweater sold for $24, less a $4.80 Poshmark fee, and my shipping discount of $1.50. So I profited $17.70, but I estimated in this uh, buyout, I spent about $11 per item. So this was a very low profit thing. I do love picking up J. Crew, 
and I did like this sweater, but the pilling was just a lot. I probably would not have picked it up if I had seen it in person and saw the extent of the pilling, but I still made a little bit of profit and it's off to a new home, so that's great. Let's look at Monday, May 3rd. I had four sales on that day. The first sale that I wanna mention is this great uh, rhinestone headband from Zara. I picked this up at Salvation Army. Some of you may have been around for a while and remembered when I purchased all those new with tag items from Zara at Salvation Army for $1 on their Monday markdowns. These were like the 99 cent color and I went crazy and bought a bunch. Many of those are still in my basement because I cannot get the security tag off of them. So that that was kind of a bust of a purchase. Some I definitely made my money back because I got some leather shoes that were a huge profit that day. But some of the other items were just a bust for me because I can't get the tag off. And I have bought magnets and I've looked online and I just can't get the tag off a couple of them. This was not a 99 cent item. I think I paid $3 for it. I had it listed for $50, which definitely was ambitious. But some of the comps on this were pretty amazing. And I had gotten several offers for like $20 in the past and I declined or I countered. I just couldn't get what I wanted. And I think I was pretty consistent about sending out offers for 30% off with discounted shipping, so $35. Still didn't go, still didn't go. I was having a slow sales day, and there are just certain items that I hold on to for whatever reason. I mentally can't let them go. This was one of them. This had 53 likes. I probably should have A, relisted this a while ago, and I should have also known that $50 may have been a little high for this. I ended up sending out an offer for $25 with $5.95 shipping, which I knew it would sell because it blasted out to all 53 people because I had never sent out an offer that low on this particular piece. I ended up earning $18.50 after Poshmark fees and my discount, I spent $3. So I still profited 15, so I made five times my money back. So that was still a really good return. I do think I wasted a little bit of my time holding on to it for so long. This I had for 122 days, so definitely a little bit longer than I would have liked to have held on to it. All those times I shared, sent offers, if I had just been a little bit more reasonable with my pricing off the bat, this probably would have moved a lot faster. Next up is this Revolve Majorel Augustina Copper Mini Dress. I was really happy to find this dress. I thought it was beautiful. I bought it at Savers. I believe I paid about $10 for this. Definitely paid a little bit more. Maybe it was 10 and I paid eight. It wasn't my $5 average, but I had it listed at $100, I believe, maybe even a little bit more. And it just sat for a while. I had it on hand for 118 days. And then finally, I got a $60 offer on it. I think I had sent out offers as low as 75 with discounted shipping, and it just wasn't moving. And like I said, dresses aren't like the best seller for me. I did have this priced high, given that it was a Revolve brand. I did receive a $60 offer, which I accepted. Poshmark fees were $12. I profited $48 on that piece, minus eight to $10. So still between like 38 and $40 profit on this. So that was a win for me. This was one of my better sales this particular week. Next up was this Free People Flowy Oversized Black Scoop Neck Tunic. I never found what the actual style was, so I use all those keywords to make sure that I'm describing my items as best as I can to draw to draw in the people who were looking for it specifically. Um, so I bought this with the intention of keeping it. And when I say like flowy, it was just like, it probably went out 30 inches. <laughs> it just was like very wide and it was a little bit too pleated. It was very tenty, but it was so cozy. And I had planned on keeping it, but it just didn't work for me when I tried it on. It was a little bit shorter than I like to wear my stuff. I think I listed it for about $35 or $38, but I sent out offers out on this same day. I can always tell sometimes the days where my sales might be a little bit slow because I send out offers that are a little bit more aggressive. And I think I had kept sending out offers on this like in that $30 range, and I finally dropped it to $26 
with um, $1.50 discounted shipping and then it sold really fast. So my profits were $19.30. I paid about $5 for this. That gets me to about $14.30, almost tripling my money, which is what I love to do. Uh, Free People is a consistent seller for me. I just try to move things along. I used to hold on to Free People a lot longer and keep them priced really high. Certain pieces have dipped. This was more of a basic piece, so I thought $30, uh, $26 was a fair price on this one. Next up are these Asics um, G2006 Indigo Blue Running sneakers. I really like to pick up running sneakers. Brooks specifically do pretty well for me. I had these on hand for 599 days. I had no idea these were even around for so long. Um, I probably picked them up at the bins or I picked them up for low money because I don't spend a lot of money on Asics. I'm guessing these are from the bins. They were a size nine and they sold for $35. So that was a pretty solid return. And that wraps up May 3rd. May 4th, I also had four sales. May 4th was not a lucky day for me because these are the two cases that were open. First were these J. Crew Ramini Vachetta flat leather sandals in a size nine. They sold for $20. These were a bins pickup. I had them on hand for 266 days. That was an offer that was sent to me. I profited $16. I bought, picked them up at the bins, so they were probably a dollar or two. I'm 90% sure these were a bins pickup. They separated, the sole was just completely separated. So that's definitely coming back to me. So I really probably shouldn't have even counted that in my numbers. The other one is way more disappointing and a lot more debatable whether or not this should have We'll see, it, it's still under review. I had this Free People jacket on hand for 265 days. It's called the Free People, Free People Over You Leather Moto Jacket with um, leopard accents. I loved this jacket. I found it at Nordstrom Rack uh, during the Clear the Rack sale. It was priced at $86. This had a Nordstrom Rack tag on it, but this was like a five, $600 Free People leather jacket and it was gorgeous and i loved the leather accents i love that it was moto free people it just had so much going for it and with that high of a retail value even at 86 dollars, i was pretty confident that i would make a decent profit when i shop retail arbitrage i like to at least double my money i like to triple my money on the normal thrift i like to double my money at on retail arbitrage. So I paid 86. The reason my buyer opened up a case was she claimed that she thinks that the jacket was altered, that there was something funky happening on the shoulder pad. I think it's been altered. It's created an issue with one of the shoulders. The last photo is the good shoulder. Um, I really don't know what they're going to do. One of the tough things with retail arbitrage is typically I'm looking to get a higher price for things, which I did. This was my best sale probably of the month so far, as far as the price tag goes, $180. However, I paid 86 for this item. And now there's a case opened. I think sometimes when things are very high priced, you're under a little bit more scrutiny because somebody's spending a lot of money, they wanna be over the moon happy with it. I think this may have been a case of buyer's remorse because it seems like a real stretch as far as um, talking about the shoulder pads and claiming that it's been altered. I'm sorry, I'm getting text messages here. I've had it for a long time and I end up getting antsy sometimes with retail arbitrage stuff because I wanna make my money back. I have to be very selective about what I pick up. After fees on this, this is assuming that the sale keeps and isn't returned. So it sold for 180, the Poshmark fees were $36, which left me with $144. Now when you take the $86 from that, my profit was only $58. I did not double my money on this. And $58 is still a good amount of money, but it's a lot to store jackets like space wise and it was a lot in the upfront cost. I would definitely not buy this jacket again, not for this price. I may end up relisting it depending on whether or not it gets approved from Poshmark, but I'll let you know. So that is disappointing. And obviously if this is returned to me, that's going to impact the numbers that I shared with you today. I do like to be especially transparent when it comes to retail arbitrage. If you were just scrolling through my sales and you saw that I sold something for $180, you'd be like, wow, that's amazing. Her average cost of goods is $5. But if I don't share with you that I actually spent 
$86 on this and that my profit was $58, you are going to see a very different picture. I'm much happier with the sale of that uh, Revolve dress that I paid eight or $9 for, eight, nine or 10, that is more paying up a little bit for me um, but I'm still profiting $38 to $40 on that. And there was much less of an investment. So it really just depends on what type of reseller you wanna be. And I tend to dabble in everything and I, I love it. I love the variety of shopping in the bins and shopping retail arbitrage. There's a big swing in what I'll spend. The next item that I sold was this Latico floral damask travel bag with some leather trim. I did pick this up at the bins. It took me 77 days to sell. I think I sold this, I think I had this listed at $65 and I ended up selling it for 30. In the back of my head, um, I knew that it was probably worth more, but again, it's a little bit of a bulky item. It's kind of like an overnight bag. I probably paid $2 for it. So $30 is a great return on a bins purchase. I just realized I missed a sale. On May 2nd, I sold these Madewell Relaxed Denim Dunwoody Raw Hem Shorts. I got these Madewell Jean Shorts at the bins. These were size 27. They sold for $30. Less Poshmark fees left me with $24 and I paid about $1.50 for them. You find one good pair of Madewell denim at the bins and you're pretty much, you know, you know that that's gonna pay for a good portion of your haul. Next up are these Reebok Club C sneakers in chalk. These were like new. I went to Savers and I don't even think I hauled these items. I found those Pendleton, collab boots, uh, Pendleton and Clark's. It was, I, I featured them on my Instagram page. I didn't feature these Reeboks, but they had some phenomenal shoes there and it was like a random day. So I was super excited to get these. Um, they were $16.99, these particular uh, Reeboks. These are a very popular style right now. They're sold at Urban Outfitters. They sell typically for about 55 or $60. I listed them at 45. They were like new, but I couldn't say that they were new, but they were probably new without tag. They were size nine. Um, I did pay about 10 or $11 after um, the discount that I received that day. I went with a friend who gets the senior discount. They were $16.99, 30% off. So they were about $10 and they sold for $35. So not a huge return, but it was a fast return and I still doubled my money, which was great. Okay, Wednesday, May 5th, I had nine sales. So this was a pretty stacked day. I haven't gone over eBay sales because they were only three. So I'm not like including those on the day that, that I'm sharing for the, my Poshmark sales, but I'll go over them at the end. First up was this Club Monaco ribbed boxy striped pullover top. Um, this sold for $23. It took 164 days to sell. And I remember I had this priced at $40 and somebody sent me like an $18 offer. If somebody sends me an offer that's under 50%, sometimes I'll just decline. My good friend Courtney always declines things that are under 50% off her listing price. And she figures if people are serious, they will come back. So she offered me $18, so over 50% off. Now I know Club Monaco's resale value isn't great, but it's still a good brand. And I even think that a $40 price, even though it was kind of a basic shirt, wasn't terrible. I countered with $23, right? So I was like, okay, this is $17 off. I know Club Monaco can be a slow mover, but let's just move this. So $23. She countered at 19. I came down $17, she came up $1. Then I declined. Later that day, she came back with $20 and I declined again. And I was like, you know, I'm not playing. Like I gave a really good offer. I went from $40 to 23. Like I basically just either declined or came back with my $23 offer. And I think she realized that that was a pretty good deal. She accepted the $23 offer. I am all for discounting my stuff. As you all know, or as you may not know if you're new here, I tend to price my items a little on the higher side. And I quickly give out 20% off with discounted shipping on my items, unless it's a really hot item, but I will give out 20% right off the bat. I'll be pretty good with my, like what I'll accept. But if I notice that there's just no give on the other end, like me coming down $17 and them just coming up a dollar, that's when I tend to get a little bit of an ad 
attitude, <laughs> but I still don't take it personally. Sometimes I just decline. So next up were these Lucky Brand Distressed Bermuda Jean Shorts in a size 25. These had been around for a while. They sold for $28. I was excited about that. They sold after 263 days of being listed. And I've been selling a really good amount of shorts, so I've been purchasing shorts. I did also offer a discount on these, so I probably had them listed at around $35, because 20% off $35 is $28. Probably did 20% off with discounted shipping. So my earnings were $20.90. My average cost of goods is $5. That means I profited about $15 on these. I don't think I would have even paid $5 for these. I personally think that I may have picked these up at the bins, but it was a really long time ago, so I don't have what I paid for them in front of me, but still tripled my money even if they were that $5 mark. Also on this day, I sold this Jay McLaughlin herringbone performance jacket in a size medium. This was a different scenario where I had it listed high. They gave me a relatively low offer. I countered at $45, and then they came up quite a bit, and this sold for $43. Jay McLaughlin is a slow mover for me, but it's a quality piece. And uh, this, because it was a performance jacket, I thought it was kind of unique. I loved the herringbone pattern. It was in excellent condition, a cool pattern. So I held my ground a little bit on this and it did sell for $43. My earnings were $34.40 before my cost of goods. Next up was this L.O. Bean striped cardigan sweater. Definitely picked this up at the bins. This sold for $20. Um, I had this listed for 72 days. I have a ton of sweaters. If you guys saw my recent haul when Hope was here, I picked up like 15 sweaters because they were just so good. The brands were so good. So I'm really trying to like do some great offers on sweaters. So that fell into that category. Plus I knew it was from the bins. So it's always nice to sell something for 20 bucks from the bins that you know you only paid like a buck or two for. Next up was another bins sale. This Vineyard Vines chambray button-down shirt in a size 10. This was super lightweight, so it probably cost a dollar. I had it listed around $28 or $32. They sent me a $10 offer, which I declined. They came up to $12, declined that. This was a case where I had declined something, and then they came back several days later, and they offered me $18. So they, they came up $8 on their price, and $18 for a relatively quick flip on a bins item. Vineyard Vines, another thing, it's really cooled off as far as like what I can get for it, unless it's a really unique piece. So I was very happy with $18. Next was one of my favorite sales of the week, another fast flip. I probably had this listed for four days. Maybe I should have priced it higher. It was a vintage Levi's trucker denim jacket, and it was in great condition. It had just been rolled out. I paid $7.99 for this, and I spotted it immediately and grabbed it. It's actually a men's jacket, which I noted in my listing, but I listed it in women's, marketed it as oversized because that's how they're selling Levi's jackets on like the Free People site, People are wearing them super oversized. So I said, this is a men's jacket. And I also measured the length of the sleeve because that's where the big difference is. And I always give the chest and the length, but I only give the sleeve if I'm listing a men's item on the women's side of Poshmark. I wish they had a unisex button for Poshmark, but they don't. I had it listed for $78 or $79. I sent out offers for 68 with discounted shipping. The woman came back with a $60 offer, which I accepted. This is when I say to myself, don't be greedy, Lori. $60 is a really great offer. Could I have held out for 70? Probably because this is a very popular style right now, but it was so fast. I thought the woman gave me a fair offer. I sold that for $60. So I profited $48. It was marked $7.99 at the store, but I got 15% off this day. So we'll call it like $7. So my profit on that was $41, which is fantastic. Also purchased at the same store that day, I picked up these adorable linen, new with tag, Eddie Bauer striped shorts that I thought were so cute. Store sells their shorts for $3.99. I accepted an offer for $24 on these cute Eddie Bauer shorts. These were only listed for two days. I love those fast flips. And again, another pair of shorts. They're selling pretty quickly. Next sweater is this 
Aritzia brand called Community. I thought it was a new to me line from Aritzia, but when I looked in my sold listings, I sold this exact sweater. I think it was one of the first pieces I ever picked up from Aritzia and it sold for a little bit more. I think the first time I sold the sweater, it sold around $40. Um, this particular community sweater, so cute. I was tempted to keep this because it's very much my style. I had it listed for $45. I sent out an offer for 20% off with discounted shipping. So it sold for $36 with $1.50 off for shipping. My earnings after Poshmark fees was $27.30. I spent about $4.50 on this sweater, say $5, so I profited a little over $22, so I quadrupled my money on this. Love Aritzia, the brand, and I loved this sweater. This was one of the 15 sweaters I bought that day. I just could not control myself. Oh, and this sale is also from uh, about a day later. Still, these are all really fast flips. Anything that I mentioned that sold when Hope was here, she was here like the third week in April, second or third week of April. So they're all very recent sales. I got these J. Crew Campbell pink gingham linen trouser pants. I should link that um, haul above here for you. This was not my big day where I got like 53 items. This was when we went back. It was the very last day that we shopped together. I was being very selective. I was looking for new with tag items or just things that I felt very confident about. Um, I paid up for a couple things because I wanted just really quality pieces because by that point I had already bought over 100 items that week and I knew I had a lot to list. So I was getting selective, but I found these gingham pants from J. Crew, as well as the matching blazer. So they were two different sizes. I listed them separately, but I referenced them in my listing. Like I also have the blazer available. These pants sold very quickly. They took one day to sell. Maybe I should have priced them higher. Um, I listed them at $75. I thought the blazers would sell first, but there weren't many of the pants listed. So I sent out offers for $60 with discounted shipping. My earnings were $46. These were priced at $8.49. I had a coupon that day. I saved $20 at the end of the day because they have like a, a stamp system and I had reached a certain amount. So I saved $20 that day. So these probably cost like $5. So that was a great profit and you know, you can't ask for more than selling in one day. I still have the gingham blazer for sale. I also have a blue blazer, the same style that I bought that day. That's also still available. We are moving right along this week. So now we are on May 6th. We just have two more days to cover. This is when we stretch. Thank you for being here. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you're having a good time. This Nike dry fit patterned tennis golf skirt sold for $20. I've had this a long time. Do you wanna know how many days? 414 days. So absolutely take that for $20. Don't even remember what I paid for it. It was an offer that I was definitely going to take given the amount of time that it's been on hand. Next up were these Italian Shoemaker Red Patent Leather Wedge Sandals. I sold those for $20. These were in mint condition. My mother-in-law had given them to me. They weren't necessarily a style that I would have picked up even though they were beautifully made. This Italian maker is sold at TJ Maxx and it just doesn't always bring a lot of money, but they do have beautiful quality shoes. So I wouldn't turn my nose up to it for the right price. They were adorable sandals. The woman loved them. She left me such a sweet love note. Um, and those were listed for 266 days. Another reason that $20 was the right price for me. Didn't pay for them. They were listed a long time, time for them to go. These Steve Madden patent leather shoes sold for $30, which was a full price sale. These were the Steve Madden shoes that I was thinking about that I had received so many low ball offers on. These were just such a classic pair, pointed toe, nude ballet flats, like just like such a staple piece which is why I held my ground. I got offers for $12, $15. I just always felt like these shoes were worth more given the nature of how neutral they were, classic. I'm glad I held my ground and they ended up selling for full price. Next up were these Lululemon cropped studio pants um, that sold for $35. I hate to say it, but I think that Lululemon has cooled off a little bit, for me at least. I haven't had like really um, high profile pieces in my closet in a while. I haven't found like a lines or 
newer items. I feel like a lot of the Lululemon that I've had in my closet, I've had for a while. I have noticed that the price has dipped a little bit. Still love to pick up Lululemon. $35, I was really happy with that return for these particular pants. The cropped studio pants don't always do as well as the full length. So anytime an item is cropped, from Lululemon, I feel like it takes a little bit of the value off. Even though we're in like cropped season, I still feel that full length pants hold their be their value better. My next sale was a pair of shoes from Sam Edelman that went to a viewer. Um, so Sarah picked these up for her wedding rehearsal dinner and I was like, oh, that made me so happy. I picked these up at the bins and they were this great, nice high heel, um, pointed toe, leather they, these are the dia or the dea dea pumps from sam edelman which i think is a pretty popular style they did have some wear to them so i think i listed them for maybe 28 and then sarah sent me an offer for 22 which i was happy she did because i i love to give my youtube viewers at least a 20 percent discount depending on the item these sold for 22 dollars four dollars and 40 cents in poshmark fees i was left with 17.60 probably paid a buck and a half at the bin. So this was a win-win on both sides. I think they will look beautiful for her rehearsal dinner. And um, thank you so much for your purchase, Sarah. And congratulations on your, on your wedding that I think she had to postpone two times in 2020. So I'm very excited for all the brides that finally get to have their special day this year. All right, I only had one sale. Say hello to, come say hi. This is Angie. Okay. I picked her up from college this weekend. I was just gonna say, I only had one sale on Friday because I didn't do much work because I was coming to pick you up. She was having fun. Yes. <laughs> All right, good luck on your job interview. It's not for three hours, but thank okay. you. Well, you look beautiful. <laughs> Angie just had her hair done. She has an interview today already ready to work. So yeah, so I was just gonna say that on Friday the 7th, we were gearing up to go to State College for the weekend. So I was in like packing mode. I sold one item on Friday, one item on Saturday, three on Sunday, and one on Monday. And I was traveling Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I wasn't sharing my closet very much. I may have listed one or two items that were saved in my vendu drafts, which is like a godsend for me when I'm traveling. But I just wanna say that when I am not listing and sharing, it hits me hard. So this was my only sale on Friday, but this is why I do what I do. I have all this flexibility and I knew that I needed to kind of push myself at the beginning of the week. So those days where I had nine sales, I mean, I was listing a lot at the start of the week and then it just kind of died out at the end. I sold these Tom's black suede women like cutout sandals in a size 10 and they sold for $25. I had them listed for 265 days. Tom's is one of those brands that I remember when I first started reselling, I would pick up their little lightweight shoes at the bins and I was like, oh, Tom's, 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 like they sell. And I had such great luck with them and then they just kind of die. So I have to either really love the pair of shoes or find them at the bins for, sorry, dry throat. Mm, I'm out of my tea or pick them up at the bins for a really reasonable price in order to pick them up these days. These sold for $25. I don't remember what I paid for them, um, but that did come to an offer for me. So after fees, it was $20. I more than likely paid around $5 for them given my average cost of goods where I always seem to land. So I still profited $15 and tripled my money on that. We're gonna quickly go over to eBay. I have been a big slacker over there, which is which shows. I mean, it is so apparent to me that listing equals sales. If you're wondering how to pick up your sales, I would just really suggest listing more relisting if you don't have new items to list relisting always charges some new energy into your closet so my sales on ebay are down 55 percent over the last 31 days i only have 410 dollars in sales over the last 90 days i have 2284 dollars so you can see that the the start of those 90 days were really strong i think i did 1800 in the month of January or February, I can't remember. Then it went to like 850 and now I'm at like 410. So I need to get back on my game. They're all in Vendu, literally two minutes to go in and add my optional fields that 
eBay requires because it's a little bit more of a robust listing than Poshmark and I've just been straight up lazy. Well, April was a tough month. I'm trying to get back on track with that. I had three sales. One was this Marla Wynn slouchy knit cardigan wrap sweater. Marla Wynn, I believe is like a QVC brand. Correct me if I'm wrong. And I had it listed for 40. It actually sold for 30. It reminds me a lot of that Aritzia sweater, just like that open slouchy, um, not full length sleeves. I've been liking a lot of the cardigans that cut off around, you know, just past the elbow for spring, just nice and light and neutral. The next one was this Pearl Azumi Elite Barrier Convertible Jacket. This sold for $45. I picked this up at the bins with Hope. It was so lightweight um, and there was a stain on the back shoulder that I noted, which I didn't see when I picked it up. I don't know if I would have picked it up with the stain, but I'm glad that I did because it sold for $45 and it probably cost a dollar. It was so lightweight. This next sale, also from the bins, also from that day with Hope. It was this new with tag Victoria Kids cotton stork sweater blanket set. So it was this cute little sweater with a matching blanket with like an embroidered stock, uh, stork on it. So cute. I had it listed for $25 and they sent me a $20 offer. I love selling bins items. Sometimes when I sell things from the bins, I'm like, I need to shop at the bins more. And the last time I went to the bins, it was my best trip in over a year. I can link that here as well. I found some great things and I have already made my money back and like probably doubled or tripled it at this point or quadrupled it. it. It's been great. That wraps up my video for today. I hope you found this helpful. I'm sorry that it was long. I appreciate you hanging in there. Remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my content. The next couple videos will be hauls and I look forward to sharing them with you. Let me know if you enjoyed this information and if there are any other tips that you wanted to hear. I gave you everything. I think it is nice to have a very comprehensive look at a small chunk of time. So thanks everybody. Love you so much. Thank you so much for always tuning in. I appreciate you guys so much. Love you. Bye. Mwah.